copper prices are quite high at the moment, as we all know. Uh, does your government have a view on copper prices, where they might be going, and are you concerned about the effect that a possible slowdown in China would have on the copper market? We think that uh, not only copper, but all commodity prices are very high, basically because there has been a strong change in the structure of the world economy. And countries like China are growing very rapidly, and they are demanding a lot of this kind of commodities. And I think that that will continue, because maybe China will slow down a little bit. Instead of being growing at 11% per year, eventually will grow at 7, 8, 9. But that will be enough to keep commodity prices high for a very long period of time. Therefore, our expectations are that copper prices will remain high. And we have a rule in Chile. When the price of copper is high, we save in order to be prepared for the rainy days. And therefore, we are saving in a, in a national fund. So we will not waste this copper boom. We will save the money in order to have a very strong long-term growth process. Now, I know in the past you had supported the idea of partially privatizing Cadelco, and proponents say that it would allow profit to be reinvested and make the company much more competitive. I'm curious, at this moment when copper prices are where they are, might it be a good idea to consider that, or will it remain state-owned? You know that the state-owned nature of Cadelco is based on our constitution. What we need now is to modernize Codelco in order to make it much more efficient in terms of cost, in terms of searching and looking for new markets, and also in terms of being more friendly with the environment. Those are the main challenges that we will have to face with Codelco. And it seems that you mentioned being friendly with the environment and that progress in the energy sector is something you're very interested in. Obviously, there's been a bit of back and forth over the current plans for the dam in Patagonia. Is that something that you plan to pursue regardless of the political pressure? Or well, We need to double our energy producing capacity within the next 10 years in order to be able to grow at 6% per year or more. And we have made a decision not to build nuclear plants and to prioritize new clean renewable energies. That's where we are putting all our efforts and investing a lot of money. But we will have to rely on other resources. Chile is a country that doesn't have, doesn't have oil or gas or coal. What we have is water. So we have to take advantage of water. Water is a clean, renewable resource. But we have to do it in a smart and wise way. That's why we will compatibilize the hydroelectric plants that we need to build with a very careful uh, care of the environment. And for that we have a very good law and we have a very good in environment institutions that will take care of that. So does that plan definitely include Patagonia? No, no, because that plan is still in the process of being approved. But we have to be fully aware that if we don't use our natural resources like water, we will have to keep building coal plants. And from an environment point of view, I'm sure that the coal plants are much more, more uh, damaging to the environment than using our natural resource, which is a clean and renewable one like the water. Remember that Chile is a very long country with the mountains and the ocean very close together. And therefore, we have a huge potential for hydroelectric power, and we have to take advantage of that. But of course, we have to compatibilize energy production with environment protection. And that's the only way to have a sustainable growth. Absolutely. Now, as far as the economics go there, are you concerned at all about economic overheating in Chile and other Latin American countries where we've seen demand accelerate so much recently? We are very much concerned that we have to grow at six or more percent not only this year next year but the, for the whole decade and therefore we're taking good care of not overheating our economy that's why 
the central bank has been increasing the interest rate and the government has been decreasing public expenditure. But remember that our growth, this first quarter, our growth rate was almost 15 percent, the first quarter. doesn't mean that we'll keep growing at that pace. But it was based on investment, exports, productivity increases. So I think it's a very sound growth. It's not a bubble. And the IMF has recently re released a report saying that they are seeing some signs of overheating in Latin America, however. So is that something you are planning to keep your eye on? Are you putting in any measures in place to other than the... Latin America is a very big continent with too many countries with different situations. So of course we are concerned about that. Because if you overheat the economy, inflation will go up, you will have to slow down. It's better to keep a stable pace of growth. And we are working on that. Now, the Chilean peso is extremely strong at the moment. We've seen it strengthen 14% against the dollar in the last 12 months. In January, the Chilean Central Bank began to intervene with their program to buy dollars. We saw a brief decrease followed by levels rising to about where they were at the beginning of January. Do you foresee extra measures being taken in the near term? The Central Bank put together a package to buy dollars in order to strengthen our own currency. And they will buy, according to what they said, $12 billion this year. But I'm not so sure whether the Chilean peso is very strong or the dollar is very weak. I would say it's more the second. And vis-a-vis uh, -vis other currencies, the Chilean peso is, I think, in, in, in uh, it's very difficult to tell what is the equilibrium level. But I think that we are not too far away from it. So speaking about the dollar, do you think that perhaps some of those pressures on the peso will be lifted once the quantitative easing program ends in the U.S.? I hope so. Because I think the U.S. will have to deal with its deficit, fiscal deficit, commercial deficit. And I think that the time to deal with it is now. You cannot keep postponing the adjustments that the U.S. economy needs. And then you think that perhaps the peso might also stabilize a little on the back of that? Definitely. If the dollar gets stronger, then we will have an ease in the appreciation of our own currency. Which would be good for farmers. I saw that recently you It will be good for our export sector. And Chile is a very open country, very much committed with international trade. We have free trade agreement with more than 60 countries in the world. I think that only Israel has so many free trade agreements as Chile. We have free trade agreement with U.S., with Europe, with China, with India. And therefore, for us, the export sector is a key sector for our economy. And finally, I just want to ask, countries like Brazil have, it, well, Brazil being the only country in Latin America, to have implemented capital controls. Now, Chile has abstained thus far. Are you concerned that when another country like Brazil does that, it can add some volatility into the capital flows that you could bear the brunt of? It could happen. But I don't think that capital control us are the best answer to a currency appreciation. I think that you have to go to the basics. And that's why we are trying to keep our currency in, in the equilibrium area. But capital controls produce other problems. And we are not thinking on applying capital controls in the case of Chile. The IMF and World Bank, do they play any role in policing capital flows? Recently, the IMF has said that maybe they can monitor it and possibly make recommendations. What do you feel their role is? I think that the IMF should play a bigger role than the one it's playing right now. Remember that in the 19... 2009 crisis, the IMF didn't play the role that it should have played in terms of anticipating and trying to, to prevent mm -hmm. what finally happened. So I'm very much in favor of uh, having a new IMF with a better, a better analysis and comprehension of what's going on in the world in terms of financial and capital flows. And you'd be comfortable with them working more closely with different countries to Yes, monitor. because now, right now, in order to take a full 
analysis of the, this scenario, you need to work together. It's not a question or a problem of one country. It's a problem of the whole world. For instance, who is responsible for the U.S. deficit? The U.S. or China because of its huge surplus? It's the same, at the same, it's the same problem. We are just looking at two sides of it. Thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Thank you.